In this chapter, we'll discuss the idea of reference frames and learn if the laws of physics remain unchanged when we change our frame of reference while studying or observing certain phenomena. We will also study what inertial and non-inertial frames of reference are and what is the difference between the two. Now, Albert Einstein has famously said, imagination is more important than knowledge. And you will need your imagination more than anything else to be able to understand this chapter better. Okay, you will need to imagine things like how would you see a person running on a parallel road if you were sitting in a moving train or a moving car and things like that. Now, this chapter is not a very long one, but can be a little difficult to understand, especially if your imagination is not helping. So it will be good if you can think about and imagine real life situations. The first problem in the exercises will help you do that. Anyways, let's start. Consider these two scenes. The first one on the left and the second one on the right. In both these scenes, we have a red car in front. Let's call it car A and a purple car behind it. Let's call it car B. Now car B has a camera mounted on top, which is acting as an observer. Now, I want you to shrug off any preconceived notions that you may have about motion and observe these motions carefully. You can imagine that you are sitting on top of car B and observing the motion of car A in front of you, which is what you will see through the camera. In one of the scenes, it is the car A that is moving and in another, it is car B which is moving. But as you observed, they both kind of look the same and it is hard to tell which one is moving. And for the observer sitting on top of car B, it is the car A that is moving forward in both the cases. And of course, we have assumed that the observer doesn't hear the sound of the car or cannot feel the vibrations of the engine and so on. The only thing that he can do sitting on top of car B is to observe car A in front of it. The point of this exercise is that all motion is relative. In the first scene, car A is moving forward, while in the second scene, car B is moving backwards. But an observer sitting on top of car B cannot tell the difference because from his point of view, it is the car A that is moving forward in both the cases. Similarly, an observer sitting in car A will see car B going backwards in both the cases. The reason the observer cannot tell the difference is because the surroundings are identical. So there is no other clue available to the observer if he or she is moving. Now pause the video here and run it through your mind and convince yourself before proceeding. Now let's make a little change in our scene so that now there is a tree on the roadside. Now if we move the cars as we did previously, it's easier to tell which car is moving, all because of this tree in the scene. The point that I'm trying to bring to your notice is that although all motion is relative, that is an observer cannot tell if he's moving or the object which he is observing is moving, but from common experience, we are able to tell, right? And the reason is, as you just saw that our brain processes a lot more information than just a car or a vehicle in front of us. Like there are other cars and vehicles, trees on the roadside, electric poles, etc. So the brain by observing the motion of all these objects as a whole is able to interpret who is in motion. But when we are talking about reference frames, we are considering an ideal scenario where we only have an observer and an observed in identical surroundings, which don't give the observer any hints. You may also have experienced this effect in a railway station when a train in the parallel track started moving and you feel suddenly as if your train has moved. But when you look towards the platform, you find out that it is the other train that has moved and not yours. 
Another example where you can experience the idea of relative motion is when walking on an escalator in a mall. If someone is standing in front of you in the same escalator, you don't see him moving relative to you. But both of you are actually moving as seen by a person standing on the ground. So let's first define what a reference frame or a frame of reference is. Well, a frame of reference is a set of coordinate axes which could be two dimensional with only the X and Y axis or three dimensional with X, Y and Z axis depending on the kind of problem uh, you are looking at. So let's use a two dimensional coordinate system and the same idea can be extended to a 3D system. Then in a reference frame, we consider that there is an observer at the origin and to represent the observer, we put a symbolic eye at the origin or many times we don't even put the eye and represent a reference frame just by a set of coordinate axis. And it is assumed that when we are talking about reference frames, there is an observer at the origin or one can imagine that there is a camera at the origin of the reference frame through which we are observing physical events. The observer at the origin of the coordinate axis is implicit in context of a reference frame. So in a reference frame, coordinate axes are meant for measurements and the observer observes the event and records the data by measurement. That's the general idea of a reference frame. Now for most of the motion that we study, for example, motion of cars, toys, people walking and so on, we measure everything relative to the earth. So the Earth's frame of reference will be an important reference frame throughout our study of physics and especially in mechanics, where we will deal with it more directly. And we will usually use the subscript E to denote that we are talking about the Earth's reference frame. Okay, So we will usually choose to fix the reference frame on the surface of the Earth. Now, as a matter of terminology, when we study the motion of bodies that revolve around the Earth, like the Moon or the satellites launched by us humans, it is easier to study their motion by fixing the reference frame at the center of the Earth. Okay, And this frame of reference is called the geocentric frame of reference. Geo is for Earth and centric stands for at the center. Okay. So this is just a name, I mean, no big deal, all right? Similarly, when we study the motion of planets around the sun, like in case of gravitation, we usually use what is called as the heliocentric frame of reference. Helios means sun. So heliocentric means measured from the center of the sun. Now that we know some terms, let's study how is the motion of a body related as observed in two different reference frames. For example, in this case, we have two observers, one on the earth and the other moving with the train. Now a car is moving on a road parallel to the train track with a speed greater than the train. The observer on the train will not see the car move as fast as the observer on the ground because the train is itself moving in the same direction as the car. Then in the second case, the car is moving slower than the train, although in the same direction. So a person standing on the ground will see both the train and the car move forward, but the observer sitting in the train will see the car move backwards. And by that, I don't mean that he'll, you know, see it moving as in moving in the reverse gear, because as mentioned in the first chapter, we are still treating all objects as point masses. So if a car is just seen as a point, the person on the train will see that point move backwards. And in this third case, both the train and the car move to the right with same velocity. So the observer on the train would see the car as stationary. Now you may want to imagine that you are sitting inside the train and there is absolutely nothing else. No trees, no buildings, no poles, nothing. Okay, Just the train in which you are sitting and the car that you are observing. If the car were moving with the same velocity as your train, you will see that it is not moving with respect to you. Isn't it? 
सो नाउ लेट्स ट्राई टू डिराइव अ मैथमेटिकल रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन द पोजिशन एंड वेलॉसिटीज ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट एज सीन फ्रॉम टू डिफरेंट फ्रेम ऑफ रेफरेंसेज वन ऑफ विच वुड बी द अर्थ फ्रेम अगेन कंसिडर अ ट्रेन विच इज स्टेशनरी Inside a compartment, there is a table which is fixed to the floor of the compartment. That is, it is fixed to the train. And on the table, we have placed a block. Now we set up a reference frame inside the train. This reference frame is attached to the train, and we will be observing the block through this train's reference frame. We have used the superscript T to say that we are talking about the train's reference frame. from this reference frame let's say that the position vector of the block is r b t here in the subscript p stands for block and t stands for observer in the train so r b t must be read as position vector of the block in the train that is it is the position of the block as measured or seen by the observer sitting at the origin of the train's reference frame Let's get out of the train now and observe it from the earth's frame. The train's reference frame is attached to the train of course and RBT is the position vector of the block with respect to the train as we just saw. Now let's fix the earth's reference frame which is attached to the ground and we are standing at the origin as an observer. An observer in the earth's reference frame. So let's say that the position vector of the block with respect to the earth or the earth's reference frame is r b e all right by the way uh, when we say with respect to earth or with respect to train we mean as seen by an observer sitting at the origin of the coordinate system attached to the earth or train and the observer is using that particular coordinate system to measure things like position and velocity and acceleration etc all right now what about this vector well it is a position vector of the observer in the train with respect to the earth so we use the subscript te where t is for the observer in the train or just the train if we treat the train as a point and consider it to be located at the origin of the train's reference frame from the triangle law of addition of vectors we can write this relationship isn't it so we can say that the position vector of the block as seen in the earth's frame of reference is equal to the position vector of the block as seen in the train's reference frame plus the position vector of the train's reference frame with respect to that of the earth now this is for the case when both the train and the block are stationary that is they are not moving so let's understand the physical significance of this equation which will also illustrate the way unit vectors are related in two different reference frames let's consider a straight line motion for simplicity the observer in the train frame sees the object kept at 5 meters in front of him so the position vector of the box with respect to the train is 5 i prime cap we have used i prime here because it's a different reference frame then let's say that the observer in the train is 10 meters in front of the observer on the ground so the position vector of the train with respect to the earth is 10 i cap here we have used the i and not i prime unit vector because we are measuring the position vector in the earth's reference frame now what will be the position vector of the box in the earth's reference frame well without any calculations we can easily make out that it should be 15 meters on the positive x axis side and mathematically let's use the equation that we derived according to which the position vector is the sum of the position vector of the box with respect to the train plus the position vector of the train with respect to the earth which is 5 i prime cap plus 10 i cap now can we add these two vectors well to be able to add it we must express i prime in terms of i well what is i prime it is a unit vector magnitude 1 and direction being to the right of the screen or towards the front of the train and what is i 
well it is also a unit vector that is having a magnitude 1 and its direction is pointing to the right of the screen or towards the front of the train so by the law of equality of vectors both i cap and i prime cap are equal hence we can replace i prime with i and this position vector turns out to be 15 i cap now let's consider another scenario what if the coordinate system of the train's reference frame is not oriented the same way as that of the earth for example, let's say that the coordinate system of the train's reference frame is oriented at 30 degrees to that of the Earth's reference frame, which means that this angle theta is 30 degrees. And let's say that now the block is somewhere here, so that it lies on the X prime axis of the train's coordinate system, 5 meters from its origin, OT. So the position vector of the block in the train's reference frame is 5 i prime cap, right? And let's say that the observer at OT is still 10 meters ahead of the observer at OE in the train's reference frame. So the position vector of the train with respect to the earth is 10 i cap. So the position vector of the box as measured from the earth RBE is 5 i prime cap plus 10 i cap now are i prime and i equal like in the previous case well no right because although the magnitude of both i and i prime unit vectors is one but their directions are different i prime is at 30 degrees from i so we cannot add these two terms directly now what we need to do is to resolve i prime along i and j and then add so let's set our i and j vectors along the horizontal and the vertical. Then the vector i prime is at 30 degrees from i. Let's call this angle as theta and its value is 30 degrees. Now the magnitude of the unit vector i prime is 1, right? Because it's a unit vector. So its projection along the vector i cap is 1 into cos theta, which is cos theta. Similarly, its projection along j cap is going to be sine theta. Hence, i prime cap can be written in terms of i cap and j cap as cos theta i cap plus sine theta j cap. And because theta is given as 30 degrees, cos theta is under root of 3 by 2, while sine theta is half. So, i prime cap is root 3 by 2 i cap plus 1 by 2 j cap. And then we substitute the value of i prime cap as found earlier and get the position vector of the box in the earth frame in terms of i and j cap. Till now, you saw the case when neither the train nor the box is moving. In the next sections, let's take up those cases and see if there is any relationship between the velocity vectors of the body as seen from different reference frames.